think of big medical discoveries, it's fair to say most people imagine a lab with people in white coats, fancy equipment and shiny glassware. But that's only part of the story, and research inspiration can come in the most unlikely of places, even down at the pub. But more on that later. My name is Hayley, and I love science. From a very young age, I had a fascination with the human body, which led me towards a career in medicine. In my late teens, during a long and difficult recovery from a car accident and series of health challenges, I found myself in a lab where I had an epiphany. As a clinician, I would only be able to help the patients who I had direct contact with, whereas as a medical researcher, I could potentially help patients all over the world. The decision to pursue a research career was cemented in 2007, when I met this guy, Professor Jeffrey Dobson, who had become my boss, mentor and colleague. After years of working in heart research, Jeff wanted to branch out to the whole body and handed me, a young graduate student, a pile of papers to read. Amongst that pile was this quote. Whilst the widespread training of medics in tactical combat casualty care has clearly saved lives, the use of saline and colloid starch by medics on the battlefield does not represent a single technological advance in ability since saline was first used for resuscitation in 1831. 1831. I was stunned. Over 175 years without medical advancement almost two centuries with no medical breakthroughs. That one quote would set me on a path to try to change this, and today I'm standing here talking about the advance that we have made in the field of battlefield medicine that will go to human trial next year. But first, let's go back to the pub. About five years ago, Jeff found himself, beer in hand, sitting next to a US military trauma surgeon who happened to be one of the first responders when three young, brave Aussie soldiers were tragically gunned down and lost their lives in a green on blue attack by a man in an Afghan army uniform on base in a Ruskin province. Jeff, being the good scientist he is, asked the surgeon a very simple question. What did you need to save those lives? The surgeon's response was instant. I just needed 10 minutes. 10 minutes to save a life. Now, as much as we would all love to stop time on different occasions, whether it's the last day of holidays before going back to work, or when our inbox is full and deadlines are looming, no matter what we do, we can't stop the clock from ticking. There is such a thing, however, as biological time, which differs from clock time. Biological time is dynamic, and differs depending on our metabolic rate. Metabolic rate is the rate at which our body uses energy to maintain life. Buying biological time by lowering the metabolic rate and therefore the energy requirements of a bleeding patient without damaging the vital organs such as the heart and the brain is a key life-saving opportunity in the first few minutes after catastrophic injury on the battlefield. And when I say minutes, I mean minutes. The concept of the golden hour, where the aim is to start treating an injured soldier within one hour, does not exist, especially on the battlefield. Almost 90% of deaths on the battlefield occur in the first 30 minutes after injury from bleeding, a fact learned over 10 years in Iraq and Afghanistan. We later learned that one in four of these deaths were classified as being potentially survivable, equating to more than a 1,000 soldiers making it home safely to their families and friends. There is an urgent, unmet need for improved methods to resuscitate and promptly stabilise the severely wounded in the first 10 minutes after injury. The solution that Jeff and I have been developing to fulfil this unmet need is called ALM, and it's a combination of three drugs, adenosine, lidocaine, and magnesium. Now, some of you may have already heard of these drugs. Adenosine is a naturally occurring compound which forms from the breakdown of ATP, the primary energy source of our body cells. Lidocaine is an anaesthetic which is often applied topically for its numbing effect. 
and magnesium is a nutrient which is vital for many processes in the body, including nerve and muscle function. We have found that when administered in combination as ALM, something miraculous happens. It rescues and stabilizes the heart. It protects the organs, including the brain, heart, kidneys, liver, and lungs. But most importantly, it stops bleeding by acting like a pharmacological tourniquet. Traditional physical tourniquets work by stopping the blood flow below where the tourniquet is tied and are only helpful if the source of bleeding is an injury to the arms or legs. But what if the bleeding's internal, for example, in the abdomen or the chest? We cannot tie a tourniquet or apply pressure to stop this type of bleeding. Of the 4,200 bleeding deaths in Iraq and Afghanistan, 86% or about 3,600 were due to non-compressible hemorrhage and could not be helped with a traditional tourniquet. ALM works inside the body, acting like an invisible tourniquet, getting to the areas we cannot reach to stop the bleeding. In fact, ALM has been shown to reduce internal non-compressible bleeding after liver injury by 60%. It does this by correcting a dysfunction of the blood clotting system that develops after trauma, which is called trauma-induced coagulopathy. Now, this finding was so important because when a patient presents to hospital with trauma-induced coagulopathy, they are more likely to require multiple blood transfusions and have longer hospital stays. They are more likely to suffer multiple organ failure and infectious complications, and they are significantly four times more likely to die. With support from the US military, we've since been able to show that ALM actually can slow biological time and potentially buy the 10 minutes required to save a life. The oxygen we need to sustain life is transported in our blood. Following major blood loss, our body's oxygen supplies are reduced. Similar to a hibernating animal, ALM reduces whole body metabolism and in doing so, reduces the body's demand for oxygen, thereby preserving vital supplies. Simultaneously, ALM redirects the blood flow, improving oxygen delivery to the vital organs of the body, the heart and the brain. Experiments to date show that ALM increases survival to three days after major hemorrhage without any other treatment. This would be a game changer for combat medics trying to save lives in hostile environments where evacuation is not always possible or can be delayed. The ALM therapy is designed to be administered as soon as possible after injury into a vein or bone. For an 80 kilogram soldier, less than 300 mils of ALM fluid is sufficient to resuscitate the patient and keep them stable for six hours. This is equivalent to a glass of beer down at the pub and significantly smaller than traditional fluid resuscitation therapy, which can require up to eight litres of fluid or 28 beers over the same time period. Why is this important? Well, because intravenous fluids are the heaviest component of all medical supplies that combat medics must carry. Soldiers carry on average 30 to 40 kilograms worth of gear. In addition to carrying the gear that soldiers do, helmet, weapons and ammunition, combat medics must also carry an assortment of medical equipment and supplies which can weigh in excess of 20 kilograms. For the same weight of fluids to treat one soldier with traditional resuscitation, 26 soldiers could be treated and potentially saved with ALM. Now, how many of you have heard of the antibiotic penicillin? And how many of you have a GPS system in your car? Did you know that both of these inventions were originally made for the military? In fact, there are many inventions and innovations that started as military applications, which we now all benefit from in our everyday lives, often without realising it, whether it's in our medicine cabinet or in the voice in our car directing us to where we need to be. The same will be true for our invention of ALM, because trauma, injury and bleeding doesn't just happen on the battlefield. 
It happened to me when I had my car accident. It happened to my friend when she lost three litres of blood delivering her baby. Trauma is responsible for one in 10 deaths worldwide every year. 5.8 million civilians die from trauma every single year. It is the leading cause of death in people aged between 1 and 45. Similar to the battlefield, bleeding is the primary cause of death, responsible for 30 to 40% of these deaths. Bleeding is also the leading cause of direct and preventable death of women, with one death during childbirth every four minutes around the world. Importantly, one third to one half of civilian bleeding deaths occur before the patient reaches hospital. Once again, time is the killer. If we want to save lives, treatment must begin at the point of injury by first responders, ideally within 10 minutes. Time is the major reason people in rural and remote environments are up to four times more likely to die from traumatic injury compared to their urban counterparts. Less than 1% of Australia is classified as urban, with approximately 30% of Australians living outside major cities. Longer times to reach hospital, combined with other confounding factors, such as inclement weather, difficult terrain and fuel resources, contribute to the very high mortality rate for Australians living outside the major cities. If a first responder can inject the ALM therapy to stabilise a trauma patient, for example, at the scene of an accident, or an obstetrician or midwife could administer it in the delivery room to a mother suffering a severe haemorrhage, it could buy them the 10 minutes to save a life. From a single quote just over a decade ago via the place of vast knowledge, that is the pub, Jeff and I have worked tirelessly developing ALM and with support from the Special Operations Command of the US military, get to take it to human trial next year. This is a great achievement. However, as scientists, the work and the journey of discovery never ends. We are always looking ahead, trying to solve unsolved problems. Worldwide, there are 42 million traumatic brain injuries every year, including one-punch attacks, assaults, domestic violence incidents, and increasingly, sports-related concussion. Early studies show that ALM increases survival and prevents secondary injury following traumatic brain injury. Beyond brain injury, can ALM improve outcomes after burns or spinal cord injury? First things first, however, is introduction into the battlefield, followed by development of a protocol for ALM use in injured and bleeding civilian patients. The end goal is to have ALM therapy, not just in every soldier's backpack, but also in ambulances, Royal Flying Doctor Service planes, in life flight rescue helicopters, in medical facilities, in rural medical practices, and in medical kits on remote stations. The possibilities are endless, and we can potentially save millions of lives. Let me leave you with a piece of advice, if I may. Inspiration and great ideas can come anywhere. So, next time you're down at the pub, why not strike up a conversation with the person sitting next to you? You never know what that conversation may lead to. Whoever thought could lead to a new drug to buy 10 minutes to save a life. Thank you.